Good evening. Good evening. So, I am about, I'm going to do this probably in two parts, I think, maybe, um, depending on how this other 20 minutes goes. So, I'm about 20 minutes through the interview with uh, H. Um, I've got uh, about four uh, main topics that I'm having an issue with now. Um, first of all is I, I have roughly about 100 issues to start off with, um, with the interview. And that mainly consists of all the damn yawning. I've never heard my mom yawn that many times in 42 years. I've never, I mean, that, that's, that's it, right? Like, I've never heard one human yawn as many times as I heard that boy yawn. Um, I'm not going to go into the, uh, I'm not going to go into, into the speech pattern stuff about why he's yawning and this and that. Um, you know, you could start to deduct that, that, you know, he knew this interview was coming seems pretty important. Um, and, uh, he didn't get enough rest, right? I have never heard anyone yawn a hundred times in 20 minutes. Um, so um, give me just a second here, testimony. Um, okay, so that's the first one, um, is all the damn yawning. Um, it is insane. I actually have someone who said that they're going to go through and um, give a proper count to the yawns. I mean, it is, it's crazy, the number of yawns. Number two, um, there seems to be a bunch of things H isn't good at. Um, he tells you from the very beginning, he's not good at keeping track of time. Um, and, and he says later on in the video how he's, um, another thing he's not good at is, is paying attention to details. Um, but he does remember most of the things of detail in the interview, or, or rather in, in that, that transpired that day, he remembers things um, with exacting detail, with extreme detail, right down to the purple and black um, vape that was that was bought. Um, he remembered that she bought a Skittles vape. Um, he, you know, was very, very remembering. Um, so that's that's number two. Number three, um, you know, clearly Ali seems to be coaching. Um, she, it, you know, there were a couple of times where he may have entered into the realm of, of answering a question incorrectly to the, to the narrative and she kind of straightened about. Um, so that, that part was, was a little bit concerning, um, you know, for, for the, the part that Ali played in the whole thing, um, it seems as if she was only there to keep him on track if he were so. It was an insurance policy sort of thing is, is the way I interpreted it. Um, so, uh, yeah, there, there, there also seemed to be some confliction about the milk jug between her and him. Um, she said the milk jugs were in the middle when they pulled up. He said that the uh, milk jugs were on his lap through the duration. Um, and he doesn't remember and they couldn't account for how the milk jugs got over there. Um, now, <clears throat> number four um, could be up there with number one, um, especially when you look at it in terms of, sorry about my neighbor here. Um, yeah, anyways. Um, when you look at it in terms of neglect and whatnot, um, you hear H saying somewhere in the 20 minute mark um, that uh, when he got out of the truck, he showed mom the vape that, uh, you know, it wasn't like something he said he got out and he went to get the vape from Candace. Um, so he clearly wasn't trying to hide the vape. He got the vape and then he said he showed his mom the vape. Um, and that was the purple and black vape from the, the hillbilly store. Um, so Ali in, in, in terms of neglect, um, you even heard the interviewer say, you know, now mom, no vaping. So, um, cl clearly Ali has a, a fair understanding of, of what he does <laughs> that, um, obviously she allows him to do. Um, so those, those were just a few things. Um, now I also had an issue with, um, 
with the way that um, that he talked about uh, eavesdropping um, in regards to when Don called about this person that had been stalking children on the property for the last two weeks or what, whatever he said. It was pretty close to that. Um, you know, the fact that he seemed to have his antennas up already. Um, and, and I found that to be um, just a point that stuck out um, that he seems to have, I don't know, if, if I were to say it seems as if maybe he's, um, he's revealed a little something about, I don't know, the situation or himself. Um, when you, when you talk about, oh yeah, I, I was trying to be quiet and, and, and act like I, I, you know, wasn't listening or whatever it was he said, I'm um, trying to hear if there was anything suspicious going on. Um, you know, and, and, and at that point, um, there, there should be no reason for, for you to be suspicious about anything other than coming home, um, with liquor on your breath. Um, so, uh, you know, 20 so minutes in, um, I'm gonna, <laughs> I wanted to post this so, so that I, I don't know, I'm gonna have to do it in a two part cause I can't see the next 20 minutes of this interview and they're not being an issue. Um, so I, I, the other thing I wanted to raise was that there was this whole, um, this whole situation with the biker gang, um, and, uh, you know, about the, the, the hunter extraction and, and so clearly he wasn't extracted. And so I, I, I wonder what, um, human solutions, what in the hell is all that even about, um, the extract? I mean, I'm just, this thing is, this thing is goofy. So, um, yeah, this is part one of my, my reaction to, to Macbeth's interview. Um, before I finish, I guess what I deduced from Ali's coaching, um, or refereeing or insurance being the insurance policy, um, it was no fucks given. I'll say it that way. If you looked at the attire that Allie had on, um, that was totally inappropriate. I mean, that was completely inappropriate to, to be on there like that. Um, there was just zero fucks given in, in terms of self-regard. Um, and so to me, that really showed a hand um, in the fact that she had to be there. Um, I, I feel... <laughs> I feel a lot of things about the way Allie portrayed herself in this interview. So um, I'm going to cut it there, guys, and we're going. I'm going to um, move on to the second half um, after I, I drink 80 shots of whatever. <laughs> I don't even drink. <laughs> I couldn't even drink an eighth of one shot. <laughs> but this stuff is just in the, the, the insanity. Um, now I want to. I, I actually have one more. And this is number five. I don't even know who the guy's name is who's doing the interview. Uh, straight up, I don't, <laughs> I don't remember his name. But let me tell you this, sir. What you've done is you have just de uh, 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 deposed. This, you just did a, disposi a, a deposition. You just deposed uh, that young man, and uh, that's not helpful at all. What you just did there was not fucking helpful. That shit is the shit police do. That is not for you to do, sir, and to um, blast his testimony. Because I tell you what, if this thing ever, 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 ever goes to some sort of criminal phase, I guarantee you that the testimony you just heard from that boy right here today will be different if this thing goes to a criminal phase, fuck you mean part two on the way.